this is actually something that once in a while I have, so I know I know personally a lot about this condition. So occasionally I'll I'll actually hear my heart beat. So occasionally I'll hear my heart beat. You might say, well, hey doc, I thought you were one of the world experts on cervical instability, so why do you have it? Anybody who knows me, the, my work is very, very hard on my neck because I'm bent over. Anybody who's an artist, like let's be honest, like when you're painting or you're a musician or you're a writer, you know, you know, guys, I'm a writer. I mean, come on, I'm not going to be like perfect neck form. Like when I write, I mean, I'm reading articles like the artist has to be free. So then and then, you know, in my past, I'm a five time Iron Man finisher. So I'm very, you know, I swim. You know, I do a lot of things. I'm very active in life. So in general, I'm very hard on my neck. You'd say my occupation and uh, dentists who come in, you know, like the, the work, you know, like they, when they're working, they can't be like perfect neck form. So I have a lot of dentists as patients. So uh, pulsatile tinnitus is when the carotid artery is one of the things that's compressing the jugular vein. So the carotid artery is compressing one of the jugular veins. So this article, which I'm basically reviewing, is treatment of venous pulsatile tinnitus in younger women. And then in this study, what they did is they did stenting. You know, they did stenting. They put stents in the uh, internal jugular vein. So in the history of caring medical, I haven't sent one person for stenting. I, I'll say that in this study, they got good results with stinting. You might say, well, doc, come on, you're reviewing an article, and then they got good results with the stents. It's like, I don't think it's a good idea to have something rigid in the carotid sheath. Like, you got to realize the carotid sheath contains the carotid artery, the jugular vein, the vagus nerve, the glossopharyngeal nerve, the spinal accessory nerve. Do you think it's a good idea to put something rigid right next to the vagus nerve? And if the stinting is on the left side, the vagus nerve innervates your heart. So do you want something solid in there? I've only seen one patient that I remember that had a stint in there. I don't pretend to be an expert in stinting. All I just know is that we measure the vagus nerves. We can, and I'll show you an ultrasound of one of our patients that had clear obstruction of the jugular vein by the carotid artery. So we can document exactly where it is. And I'm telling you that where it is is almost always where their worst instability is. So if somebody has here, I'll give an example. So let's just say somebody had C2, C3 instability, right? So every time they bent down, the C2 went like this. Well, obviously that can push the carotid artery into the jugular vein. That would be the most logical explanation. And that's what we find in the patients. Oh, I wanted to just show this. This shows basically in the bone, the carotid artery and the jugular vein actually go right next to your, your hearing organ, you know, the vestibular cochlear nerve. You know, like when somebody has hard of hearing, they do a cochlear implant. So just know the tinnitus, which is basically, there's no sounds, like nobody's talking or this or that, and the person hears something, like that's what tinnitus is. Tinnitus is almost always that there's like a rip current going through the jugular vein. So anybody down in Florida after a storm knows the sandbar, there's a rip current that can, the, the way the ocean is, now there's a space in the sandbar and now there's a rip current there so you do not swim there because the rip current's gonna take you out to sea and people drown because of rip currents. So if you have constriction of the jugular vein and there's like a rip current, the velocity flow is higher, you can hear that and it can cause tinnitus. So obviously if the carotid artery is causing a rip current, if you will, in the jugular vein, that's going to cause what? Pulsatile tinnitus because every time the, jug the carotid artery pulses, it's going to be transmitted up the jugular vein and you're going to hear it. So this is basically in the neck, you'll see that 
the carotid artery is normally medial to the jugular vein. There's the vagus nerve. So if, say, this vertebrae is rotated a little bit, it can push the carotid artery into the jugular vein, and then that gets transmitted right near where the hearing organ is, right where your ear is, and then you hear the sounds from the jugular vein. So basically tinnitus, you're hearing the sounds from the jugular vein. This is a CT venogram 3D construction of one of the patients of Caring Medical. Here we can see the large jugular vein on the right side. So this patient was right side dominant. And here you see the carotid artery smashing into the jugular vein here. And this person on the left side had pulsatile tinnitus. See here, you could see the carotid artery smashing into the jugular vein there. That's what you see there. And this is what it looks like under a CT venogram axial view. On the right side, see the jugular vein here and the carotid artery. See how they're separated and they're both big. This person was right-sided jugular vein dominant. And here you see that, you see this big carotid artery here and see how it's smashing in to the jugular vein there. Like see how it's compressing the jugular vein here. So you see that right there. So this little sliver here is the jugular vein. So this person on the left side had pulsatile tinnitus. And this is kind of what it looks like under ultrasound. So this is without the color duplex. This is the carotid artery. This is the jugular vein. And you can see where the blue is the jugular vein and see how the carotid artery is just smashing into the jugular vein. So that's basically what it looks like under ultrasound. So because we do so many ultrasounds, we can document it without a person needing a venogram. And what I always tell Karina, our ultrasonographer, is I need to know the exact level. So let's just say I know this patient, it was C2, C3. That's, she said it's right at C2, C3. Then we correlated it with the person's uh, digital motion x-ray and they had significant instability. And then, I, then the patient I know, they're still under care. So I'm gonna say right now they're like 80 to 85% resolved. So as their instability has been getting resolved with prolotherapy, then the, um, you know, the jugular vein is less and less compressed and their pulsatile tinnitus is much less. Mm -hmm.